Ever wondered why a promising athlete like Mackenzie Dern fell short of her superstar potential? She possessed the looks, the talent, and the drive, yet her journey took some unexpected turns. So what derailed this Brazilian prodigy's path to greatness? In this video, we dive into the intriguing story behind Mackenzie Dern's rise and stumble. Man, is she fun to watch grapple. I could watch that all day. I mean, it's methodically beautiful. It's position by position by position. From the heights of expectation to the shadows of unfulfilled promise, discover the sad truth of what really happened to Mackenzie Dern. Mackenzie Dern was born on March 24, 1993, and was destined for greatness. Raised between Arizona and Brazil, she was immersed in the world of martial arts from a tender age. How does Mackenzie approach this match? There's such a, a big difference in size and weight. Under the tutelage of her father, Wellington Megaton Diaz, a renowned grappling expert, and her stepmother, Luciana Tavares, a black belt in her own right, Mackenzie's journey began. By the age of three, she was already honing her skills on the mats. Her skill was undeniable. At just 14, she stepped into adult competitions, showcasing remarkable talent that culminated in her being awarded the coveted black belt at a youthful 19. Mackenzie's mastery extended beyond borders. She secured victory at prestigious events like the Asian Open. Transitioning to MMA, Mackenzie Dern's start was a mixture of both triumphs and tribulations. Debuting in Legacy Fighting Alliance, she clinched victory but faced challenges, notably missing weight in many of her fights. Despite setbacks, she delivered impressive performances showcasing adaptability and resilience. Then, in 2017, Mackenzie joined the Invicta Fighting Championship. Her debut victory signaled a new phase, eventually leading to her UFC debut against Ashley Yoder in 2018. Mackenzie won her debut fight via a split decision, starting off her UFC career with a bang. But the road was not without bumps. Weight management issues continued surfacing, tarnishing some of her victories. However, Mackenzie's stock continued rising as she continued delivering standout performances. From impressive submissions to nail-biting wars, she delivered whenever she was locked inside the octagon. Her impressive knee bar finish against Hannah Cyphers was a highlight that made the entire world take notice. But still, challenges and problems persisted. Defeats against formidable opponents like Amanda Rebus and Marina Rodriguez showed that maybe Dern wasn't ready to compete with the upper echelon of the division. But these losses were far from the only thing that Dern had to battle with. Her journey in the octagon was marred by personal turmoil. As Mackenzie Dern prepared for her UFC Vegas 73 fight against Angela Hill, her personal life was in complete disarray. She was going through a very bad divorce with her then-husband, Wesley Santos, with multiple accusations of abuse being thrown around. Dern's public revelations about the turmoil she faced highlighted the different struggles these MMA athletes go through even outside of the octagon. In a very candid interview with Ariel Helwani on the MMA Hour, Mackenzie Dern recounted the harrowing ordeal she faced with her marriage. She described feeling trapped in a cycle of abuse, unable to defend herself due to fears of legal repercussions, and the potential loss of custody of her young daughter, Moa. The divorce proceedings unfolded as a public spectacle, with both Mackenzie Dern and Wesley Santos trading accusations and grievances. Dern's allegations of physical and emotional abuse were met with vehement denials from Santos, who criticized her decision to air their private life publicly. Accusations flew from both sides. Mackenzie Dern claimed mistreatment of her dogs, financial improprieties, and physical assault, while Santos countered with allegations of his own, including claims of physical assault and misconduct involving their daughter. But what made the situation even worse for Dern was that the court's ruling was a mixed bag offering little solace to Mackenzie Dern or even Wesley Santos for that matter. Joint custody of their daughter Moa was granted, with Dern designated as the primary earner. The decision instead led to even more trouble for Dern as the financial fallout was very significant. Dern was ordered to pay Santos $10,000 for legal fees and a substantial monthly allowance for spousal and child support. Now you would think that these legal battles would affect Dern's performance inside the octagon, but that's not what happened, at least initially. 
Her resilience shone through in her UFC performance against Angela Hill. Channeling her personal struggles into fuel for the fight, Dern delivered a commanding performance, dominating Hill over five rounds. Her victory was not just a display of the great athlete she is, but also a testament to her unwavering determination in the face of adversity. Even the UFC president Dana White was impressed and showered praise upon McKenzie for her unbelievable performance. He commended her aggression and versatility, noting how impressed he was by her ability to dictate the fight against a seasoned opponent like Angela Hill. Mackenzie's evolution as a fighter, blending her renowned grappling prowess with newfound striking skills, left everyone truly impressed. For Dern, the victory over Angela Hill was more than just a win in the octagon. It represented a personal conquest, an assertion of strength and resilience she had in the face of such huge odds. However, the glory and praises did not last long, as she would make changes in her life that changed the trajectory of her UFC career. You see, Mackenzie Dern's journey began at the esteemed MMA lab in Arizona, a well-known training ground for elite fighters guided by the likes of John Crouch, Benson Henderson, and other seasoned professionals. However, a rift emerged, leading Mackenzie to depart from the MMA lab, eventually relocating to California for her training. The sudden changes in Mackenzie's gym affiliations raised some eyebrows. Speculation swirled as Mackenzie stepped into the octagon without the familiar faces of her previous training camps. Questions lingered about why Mackenzie left, and they would get even louder as her performances started deteriorating. But that wasn't the only change that she made. In tandem with her gym transitions, Mackenzie Dern underwent multiple shifts in management. After parting ways with Ruby Sports, Mackenzie briefly aligned with Paradigm before transitioning once again to new management under Tiki Gosen, known for representing notable fighters like Brian Ortega and TJ Dillashaw. The series of management changes highlighted a period of uncertainty in Mackenzie's professional trajectory. While such transitions are not uncommon in the world of MMA, their frequency within Mackenzie's relatively short career drew attention, prompting questions as to what exactly is happening behind the scenes with Mackenzie Dern. Despite winning the Angela Hill fight, Dern could not continue her momentum, and the weight of the challenging I divorce and the responsibilities of single motherhood started catching up with her. The emotional toll of these personal struggles surfaced in Mackenzie's demeanor and performance inside the cage. The important fight against Jessica Andrade revealed some cracks in Mackenzie's armor. Struggling to find her rhythm, Mackenzie appeared uncharacteristically unprepared and outmatched. Music Andrade was able to pick Mackenzie apart and stop her in a dominant fashion. What made the fans even more worried was that this was the first stoppage loss for Dern. The defeat also gave win to the persistent criticisms about Mackenzie's ability to overcome top-tier opponents and ascend to title contention. The sequence of changes, both in Mackenzie's training environment and management, prompted speculation about their role in her performance decline. The absence of familiar coaches and training partners raised concerns about continuity and stability in Mackenzie's preparation for high-stakes bouts. The aftermath of this fight revealed more than just a defeat in the octagon, it unveiled the challenges and emotional struggles that Mackenzie was contending with outside of the arena. After the loss, Mackenzie Dern took to social media to share her thoughts and reflections. With a bruised face and a black eye from the fight, Mackenzie acknowledged the loss and emphasized her trust in divine timing. She expressed her disappointment in not delivering her best performance at Madison Square Garden, but remained steadfast in her faith. Reflecting on the fight, Mackenzie admitted to getting caught up in the emotions, deviating from her strategic plan. She highlighted the importance of emotional control, a trait that she thinks will make her into a championship caliber fighter. After UFC 295, Mackenzie faced Amanda Lemos at UFC 298 in a compelling bout that was bound to test her resilience and tenacity. Despite adversity, including a compromised leg in the first round, Mackenzie rallied in the fight. However, she still ended up coming up short and losing the second fight in a row for the first time in her career. Now, at 31 years old, Mackenzie Dern finds herself at a crossroads in her MMA journey. Many view this as a make-or-break situation for her. Will she fulfill her potential and silence the doubters? Or will she become another what-if in the annals of MMA history? Only time will tell.